Yes, that's right, friends. I just updated the stream to say we're going to be playing Portal. And you may be very excited to think that we're going to be playing the uh, the exciting Valve game that's all about physics puzzles and a portal gun and has a wry sense of humour. But, hold on a second, we're not playing that portal, we're playing Portal 1986. So, we've taken a, uh, we've moved one year forward in time from Little Computer People, which was released in 1985. Um, this is also a game released by Activision, developed and released by Activision. But this is a primarily text-based, um, I guess kind of like an adventure game. Let's get the covers up so you can see what we're playing. This is it. So this is this is Portal, and it describes itself as a computer novel, which I think, as we go on, will kind of make sense. I think it's a good way of describing what it's what it is and what it's doing, um, because it is both a computer, sorry, a novel on a computer, and it is kind of a novel about computers as well, um, via the medium. Of that, that for aforesaid electronic device. So, uh, I will fade the music down slightly. There we go. Fade that music down. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. So, Portal 1986, Activision. I'm going to draw forth some of the documentation. Uh, because the um, it's an interesting game, interesting package. We're going to be looking at the Amiga version of the game. Um, it came out for, for several different systems at the time. The Amiga was the original. I think it's graphically the most complete and most interesting. Although it's interesting to note that the Apple II version seems to follow the, um, the Amiga most closely in terms of its graphics, which is an interesting thing to... Um, to say really, considering the the great uh, graphical gulf between the Amiga and the, the Apple II, really. Okay, so the uh, in the box you have a map, which we'll see in a bit. Um, a couple of booklets. So we've got a individual booklet for the prologue. So that's um, written uh, as a piece of prose, and then we have the manual for the game is written in World as the emergency operating instructions for the World Net computer. So you kind of get a taste of what this is as I read you the prologue. I think it's worth mentioning that, as well as uh, folks from Activision, um, uh, so Brad Freger is kind of a list as a producer and a, a sort of co-conceiver of this this project. But the main writer for it is, uh, is oh I forgot to write his name down. His name's on the screen. Uh, <laughs> Is it big enough for me to see? Uh, Rob Swigert. Rob Swigert. Um, who's a novelist and poet. Um, of science fiction. Satire. Who has an interest in archaeology. And was part of a futurist, futurist think tank. So that's kind of going to it with that mindset. So a novelist um, authored most of, of what we're going to be reading. So this is Portal's prologue. I've always been something of a loner. That's why I volunteered for the mission. Yet this empty world below scared me. We came in over Florida. I knew it had to be air. But the broad facilities of Canaveral were nothing more than a grassy field. Though the outlines were there, and the monuments of the early launch facilities seemed to be in good repair. Only after we landed could I see that their preservation was less than perfect. I walked around, poking into the few remaining buildings. All were empty and silent. Gulls circled overhead. Small animals moved in the underbrush at the edge of the meadow. Birds sang. I found a terminal of unknown design in a building. Nearby was a small cap labelled with the words MindLink XV3 2044. I put it on, but nothing happened. The terminal was inactive, and I could find no way to change that. It had no screen, no keyboard, only what I took to be a holographic projection platform, and this cap. I'm not even sure it was a terminal. Gaijus had been of remarkably little help. All her expert systems, all her powerful AI functions seem helpless. 
so I asked her to go over ship's log. Our trajectory went according to programme. We approached 87.79% light speed within the first five years subjective travel. When something interrupted the programme, guide users unable to analyse what. A broad swatch of data storage seems to have been wiped. A proton flux? Magnetic anomaly? The scoop performed according to design. Speed increased to 93.45% C, then to 94, 95, 96, 97. Time dilation began to affect the circuits in ways guide users could not determine. We never reached 61 Cygni. I listened to audible representations, mostly the hiss of high-speed data, the shrill chatter of bits flowing in the superconducting circuits. Why do I do this? I do not know. There's nothing else to do. Once I thought I heard something, I asked for slower and slower replays. I tried filtering and modulating the sounds. It was almost like music, a chant or patterned polyphony. I moved the frequency up and down. I heard what I thought must be a name. Peter DeVore. I'm actually going to write that down because I think that's... I think this text is only mentioning that because that's an actual clue for the game. I must have been mistaken, yet the name was there, hidden in the chittering data, clearly enunciated. I listened to it over and over, then I went outside again. It was a warm spring day, a light breeze came in from the ocean. The air was clean and bracing with salt and ozone. It was so much like the day I had left this field, how many years ago? I always get a bit, can, I always feel a bit uh, displaced when uh, an author describes the... Uh, I guess the scent of the sea as ozone because I don't have a I have a point of reference for what the sea smells like because I have I've have been to the ocean but uh, ozone is kind of a scientific concept that doesn't really register with me. Anyway, um, Gaiji's sampled all available frequencies, all available channels. There was no one in the world, so I lifted the ship and moved slowly over the face of the earth, looking for. Do not know what I was looking for. Where Washington DC once sprawled beside the Potomac, lay a lay scattered parkland with ancient monuments. The Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Monument, the Capitol Building. The Pentagon was just an outline, a pentagonal berm covered with grass. In the Library of Congress building, I found a map called Intercorp World Administrative Regions Archival Hard Copy, with a date, 14th of August 2077. The map includes what appears to be an organisational chart for the Intercorp Council and its political or administrative regions. I didn't recognise any names, but I read an outline of 21st century history. My own departure is listed for 2004. Monday, 24th of May. One of the first hypersonic salt cycle suborbitals took me up the Gaiji scope. It's all there. The news nets at the time carried live coverage of the scoops going operational. I remember that in 2004. By the time I'd left Mars orbit, I was all but forgotten. So many other things seemed to be happening in the world. In the entry for Thursday 5th of February 2076, Gaiji 61 Cygni single man explorer telemetry ceased as of this date. Signal attenuation indicates system shutdown. Presumed lost. That's all. Presumed lost. No effort to understand what happened. So let me show you that map. This is the map that comes with the game, and um, it looks like a really interesting bit of world building. I don't know um, if it has much gameplay impact, but we'll see. So, the uh, prologue continues. I had no idea how much time had passed, of course. When the ship revived me, 200 million kilometres out, I was disoriented and puzzled. Later, when we swept in over the South Atlantic on our first orbit, I grew alarmed. This was not the world I left. Although the general ge geography was familiar, there was the hook circle of Antarctica, the Western Hemisphere, the broad bulge of Siberia and the Arctic ice cap, but where were the cities? Where was the constant communications chatter? Where were the traffic and human life? The planet I was orbiting was empty, yet the system was the same. The LP5 colonies still hovered at the Lagrange points, but they were too silent. The moon circled overhead, but their voices came out of lunar bases. The geosyncs and relay satellites had certainly multiplied since I had been gone, but nothing but unmodulated carrier waves moved between them. Yesterday I was laid into the complex hum of the first cryofield aboard the Gyges and put to sleep. For me it was yesterday, yet years had passed. I should have revived in orbit off 61 Cygni and spent a year observing the double star. This did not happen. Gyges held me, my cryofield, 
and the most advanced artificial intelligence computer Earth scientists could produce in the early 21st. She spoke and understood standard natural language. She contained the intuitive and deductive skills of countless experts in celestial navigation, the physical and biological sciences, life support, entertainment, and psychological adaptation. I anticipated no problems, but I awoke, it seemed, moments after I'd gone into the cryofield, 200 million kilometres from Earth, inward bound, and everything has changed. Manhattan is a monument. The triangular mile-high pyramids of Midtown still stand, but they're empty. The Lower East Side is a vast field littered with abandoned vehicles of types I've, I've never seen. Some of them have been open to the seasons for years. Brambles have grown over the seats and through the steering columns. At least I think that's what those whip-like extensions from just below the left-hand window must be. Cold wind was blowing. Then early in June, I found an entrance. Everyone had moved underground. Of course, that movement had begun before I left, but I had no idea it would be so extensive. The world has been reforested. It is very beautiful, but here is no one to talk to. I am the last person left alive. Underground is nothing but desolation, and as corridors where my footsteps echo, condensation collects and runs down the walls. Occasionally a gust of air shows some random action of the atmosphere controls, so somewhere there's still power, but I have yet to find a machine or terminal that works. Not that I understand how to work them, even if they're active. The lifts don't work, and I've had to climb access ladders or stairs. There is no sign of violence. It's as if everyone had stepped out years ago and not returned. The Glides works very well on the planetary surface. Naturally, I left the scoop in orbit, but she was designed to be rugged and intelligent. She sang to me as we flew over what was once the eastern United States, recently called, from the chart, the Northwest Alliance. Nothing exists but trees, as far as I can see, as far as the Glides sensors can scan. Trees and rolling hills... This used to be called Pennsylvania when I left, and this was Ohio. The lakes gleamed to the north, pale and blue. I landed south of Chicago. The loop is enclosed in a dome. The old 20th century building is perfectly preserved. Everywhere else, there's nothing but forest, and meadow, river and lake. I walked into old Chicago. The access lock of the dome stood open. An ancient computer printout littered the street. I found a hospital on the first level down. There were bodies in some of the beds, the first sign of human beings I had found. The bodies were mummified inside life support tents. They had been dead for years, and there were not many of them. I sat beside one of them for hours. I don't know what happened to them, what terrible disease they had, or why they were abandoned here in life support that no longer functioned. On the second level, I found a terminal with a small, ready light burning. Nearby, I found the World Net Emergency Operating Instructions. The instructions tell me what to do if my mind link is not functional. I don't know what a mind link is, but I assume that it must be adapted to my own mind, and this has never happened. So I will read the instructions, and this, and then I will try to find out what has happened to the world, where the people have gone, and if I must remain alone for the rest of my life. Gaijis tells me that my psychological adjustment is in peril. I have been too long without other people. So definitely... An, in, an interesting game to play, an interesting game to play after after recent times as well. Um, I don't know how near or far to reality the the game's going to get, but we'll we can explore that as we go. Okay, I'm going to stop that little bit of background music there. Pop that away. So the um, the the next booklet in. The, the package with the game is the World Net Emergency Operating Instructions. Um, nicely written in World um, and dated as an emergency hard copy that was uh, printed out on the 11th of November 2088. So we're, the game's taking place some time after that. Um, I need to get some little bits ready um, before we switch to the game window. So I'll just be doing that for a sec. I'm going to keep a couple of notes as well. Um, I'll just show you my um, my setup in a minute. So we're in Chicago, where we have our our um, terminal we can finally access, and the name Peter Devore we think is significant. So I'm going to keep those things in mind, and I'm going to get emulating. So we're playing an emulated. Um, version of the game which came on three discs originally. 
um, and has a limited sound, but um, I think quite um, quite atmospheric sound. Uh, let's switch to where is it? This? Yes, here we go. Okay, so you'll see that start coming up. Here we go. I'll just adjust the sound a little bit. So this is uh, a a futuristic vision of a world network from 1986. There we go. Let's just see how that. Oh, that's all looking and sounding okay, I think. I'm going to turn the volume down for me just a little bit. So, I've only played a little bit of the game so far just to kind of test its functionality and it seems to be fine. Um, but I really like the, um, I like the visual design of it. Um, it's going to look pretty old school. It's got, so basically it's going to be a, a Windows based operating system, which is still kind of a novel a novel thing in 1986 um, and we can because it's the Amiga we can uh, point and click on it um, so I think apart from entering our name at the beginning we um, there's not going to be much else we need to type I don't think although it's, it feels like it's got the structure of kind of a detective game I think the game might lead us through everything that we need to know I wasn't sure um, when I first loaded this up whether we need a special name to log in. I don't think we do. I think we can just put in whatever name we choose, and that also sort of doubles up as our uh, save slot. So we're going to be cat sequences, and we need to select a user to be replaced. So I think there's two save slots here, and this disk image um, may have been used before, uh, maybe copied from someone so who had the saved McLeod and Rudy. Um, let's replace McLeod. Welcome to our net. I really like the soundscape that we're going to hear. I'm going to be quiet for that. monitor verified holographics imager system incompatible keyboard interface verified manual interface verified I'm indeed pulling pipes uh, mind link interface system incompatible voice recognition system system incompatible phonic output driver system incompatible Retina scan capability verified. Oh heck, is my webcam on? What's going on? Local node will report active terminal. Local node reports unterminated transit query at central processing. System check monitors request transit query termination. Uh, okay. Loading. I really like the um, that uh, sort of um, notification tone. I think that's a good job of anticipating the kind of uh, system sounds that computers have up until this day. So there's a lot of technical specification in the uh, fictionalized instruction manual relating to these different categories of things we can look at. Um, so the only thing I've really explored is central P, which is central processing. 
um, which apparently is based in Geneva. Um, and that is where we can save from, so I know that much to be true. So there's a little save to disk icon there. The picture of the person that with the beard, that's Homer, um, who is our artificial intelligence. And we have three priority messages here to, to read through, so let's do that. I think this is going to be a, a heavy reading game, so I'm going to read everything through as best I can. And I do have some water with me, although I seem to be getting through it quite quickly. So this is this is file three of three, priority one message, entry by Ezekiel Fortune. You know what, maybe we should write down the name of Ezekiel Fortune. Um, or maybe we'll read through it first and then we'll, we'll work it out. Um, so Ezekiel Fortune has a DNA number. We could have entered the DNA number at the beginning of the game. Uh, so this is a log from November the 26th, 2093, so we're at least that far through. Um, Christchurch node, so that's New Zealand, presumably. 1451 local time, destination to deeper world net central, divert a dead letter file. My god, what's happening? This is Zeke, CP override garbled data, Christchurch, New Zealand. This morning, people were wandering the corridors. Just a few. By noon, everyone had vanished, simply disappeared. Now I... Transit query terminated. Mmm, interesting. So the, um... This being old school, we can click on the, uh... The little Windows icon in the corner here to toggle between... Um... Uh, overlapping windows. So classified, I don't think we can do anything with. So we go back to this one. I think to go back at the message, we click on central processing again. There we go. So I think that mark there means we've read it. I think that's what the uh, the manual told me would happen. So we're accessing the deck crystal for number two of three. Also from Ezekiel Fortune. Um, 26th November 2093. Wasatch found the name Peter DeVore. Mm -hmm. Who is he? I had to move in through Med 10, where I have clearance, sideways at some local node near Denver. Um, then, oh, hang on. then in through a social interrupt to Wasatch. And even then the name disappeared after a level 2 query. This has something to do with what is happening. Interesting. So they're having trouble with network access by the sounds of it. And Wasatch is... Um, let me see if I can find out what the description of Wasatch is. So Wasatch is the data stream for genealogy since around 2010 for the Utah region and the Western Alliance. Um, that's what that appears to be. Um, yeah, here's a fuller description. So the Wasatch presents ge genealogical information complete only since circa 2010. The data space, laden jars, and crystal storage occupy an ancient mine in the Wasatch Mountains in the old Utah region of the Western Alliance. So there's various different things that we could find there. So maybe I'll put down. Uh, like November 2093 and Ezekiel Fortune and that, let me make sure I spell that right um, and then um, I don't know if it's important that they were from Christchurch but let's write that down as well um, Yeah, I think that'll do. So we've read that one. Let's go. What happens if we click on Homer? This claim is our AI, so in theory has stuff for us. Okay, one of three. Priority three message. Transit query activated. Transit query activated. Is equal for June November twenty third. Yeah, so they they were going backwards in time here. So this morning I spliced into Med10 for oh oh went a bit quick there Med10 for routine diagnostic augmentation. We had a new viral disease here in Christchurch, something we hadn't seen in almost twenty years. Nothing serious. A few sheep were showing signs of lethargy. Okay, this is uh, this is <laughs> getting perhaps a bit closer to uh, to home than I thought it might. 
Med 10 led me through the usual series as we examined the viral DNA together. Suddenly the mind link went crazy. It seemed a system override was underway, shorting out my link. It hit my hippocampus pretty hard because I started confabulating. A glowing tunnel, lights in the sky, a boy hunched over a console, walking through a meadow wet with dew. A series of random but intensely real images that took over my awareness. Then nothing. The whole world that went down for over an hour. So, I mean, immediately I'm thinking this is probably a... Uh, a virus that somehow transferred to the the network. Okay, so have we have we read all those, Homer? It says make sure to read all the message, um, otherwise you wouldn't have access to further messages from the AI. Oh, there's oh. Is there more? Hang on. Is there more than one entry for the message? Let's see. Let's go back through this one and see if there's any stuff we haven't read. It doesn't really tell you when you actually get to the end of a a file, does it? Um, twenty four, twenty ninety three. I've tried all peripherals here, and at Christchurch node itself, Geneva remains offline. Mine link is still down. I don't trust it anyway since yesterday. Routing through other major nodes brought strange messages. Intercorp Council has sifted personal databases for conservative psych profiles, people willing to resist the migration. I asked, what is this migration? I'm writing down migration. Uh, I'm only a veterinary technician. The council does not consult me. They found hints in some of the nearby restricted zones in SciTech. Okay, I'll link that to SciTech. A field is building further south. What kind of field? I asked. SciTech offered me equations, but I could make nothing of them. Interesting. Since the migration began, the net is swamped with rumours. Some kind of radiation is destroying all human life. Oh, hang on, I clicked too soon there. LP54 node suggests that another war had started in Antarctica, but someone in Nairobi said they were just extrapolating from the old assault on Erebus. Why does the council do something? Why is it called migration? That should mean that people are going somewhere, not dying. Well, unless their consciousnesses are migrating from their bodies into the net. Interesting. So I think we have actually. Uh, okay, just keep just keep clicking down, folks. Um, Unfortunately, there's no, no slide indicator to, to tell you how far you got down that message. So, we've read the whole of that message. Okay, so we need to read all of these before we uh, get access to new information. Okay. So, we read the first part of this about Peter DeVore's name coming up. And then, next day, I found some more information about DeVore. But when I went back, the entry was blocked and the files purged or recoded. His name is associated with the Scion equations. There are, report, there are reports now that Antarctica is depopulated. There is no one left. I found a way to confirm this. So Antarctica seemed to be um, an early site for what was happening. Been on the net for a week now, looking for a way into Geneva. All peripherals are down, and now I have to enter data with a keyboard. Geneva node still doesn't answer. I'll leave this diary on Central Processing's open file. Perhaps someone can help. Okay, interesting. Also classified? Also classified. Hmm. Okay, so we've read all those. That's cool. Let's see if Homer wants to interact. No? Oh. Okay, we'll go back to the main menu. Alright, so I'm going to take a sec to... Uh, Type this up in our in our notes file. So um, we're in Chicago. Um, we're in Chicago, right? Um, Peter Devore is doing or oh, Sci something, wasn't it? Sci. Should have written that down. Let's just check on that. Central processing.
That was in the second entry, I think. Scion equations, that's what we need. Okay, cool. What they are, I don't know. There is a there's a there's a glossary in the manual and everything. Um, I guess we'll kind of work it out as we go. So we're in Chicago, um, and okay, event is November twenty ninety three. So that's a a long. We're a long way out from when we left the planet in two thousand and four. So there's Ezekiel Fortune, who is a vet from Christchurch. Sorry if you can hear uh, the atmospheric sound of walking by outside kind of ruins the atmosphere of a completely depopulated world but you know you do what you have to uh SciTech migration at SciTech um let's pop should I pop like a ooh let's pop an asterisk at the beginning of each of these bullet points so Antarctica, Antarctica depopulated first. Okay, interesting. Well, I'm very intrigued. Let's see what we can do. So we'll go back to here. So no new messages, no new um, information popped up here yet. Uh, Homer doesn't want to talk to us from here. What if we click on Homer itself? Is that... Okay. Oh, data space is temporarily empty. So we get the same kind of um, display, but with a green backing. Okay. So, if we want to look up some of these people... Um, where do we go? I'm going to have to consult my documentation, I think. So... Um, psychology, okay, the 12 data space icons appear on the interface panel are central processing and Homer, okay, yeah, I don't know which ones those are, they're psychology, okay, yeah, psychology, psychology, um, which is psychology profiles of individual citizens, so that's there. Edmod is individual educational modules, aptitudes and programming. Life support is physiological data, timestamp data not available with older peripheral input output, IO. Whatsatch, uh, genealogy since around 2010, Utah Region West Alliance. It does sound amusingly close to WhatsApp, doesn't it? Um, history, short accounts of significant events. That's kind of, you think people want to look at that next, really. Military is prescribed, um, in a sense of forbidden. Uh, Psylink is proscribed. Um, oh, that's kind of, yeah, that's uh, similar to the uh, iconography they used in uh, Babylon 5, I think, for the, um, the telepaths. Um, Okay, so the Silink facility is located in Wallace Herb Warren's Kansas region, Western Alliance. And then we've got SciTech, Science and Technology, Geography, Geography, General Maps and Data, and Med 10 Medical Information. Okay, it doesn't tell me what those things are. Excellent. I'm going to go for history. I feel like that's where we should go. I hope there's something there. Data Crystal Search. Oh, okay. Um, these both sound ominous. Elimination nuclear power 
and migration resistance. Let's start off with migration resistance. By early 2093, the Intercorp Council had created a population database containing ooh, 204 million citizens' names and DNA numbers. These citizens would, it was hoped, provide Intercorp with the psychic counterfield to the rapidly generating migration. Interesting. Names are available from life support via central processing AI on a need-to-know basis. Search algorithms include ethnic, linguistic and geographic intensive parameters, order signed and dated Regent Sable Protector. Well, that's an, in a whole range of interesting things to throw at us, isn't it? So there's some kind of um, like nobility or monarchy um, in terms of titles, but also it seems like Intercorp is probably a corporation that runs the world. Seems to be the inference. Um, okay, so that's that's all of that, isn't it? Okay, data crystal failure. Interesting. And so I don't know if these little bits of information um, are supposed to lead us anywhere. Well, let's go back to the main the main database. So we've read that one. Um, elimination nuclear power. So the migration. It's described there as something that's a phenomenon that's happening by itself rather than a process initiated by anyone. So on March the 15th, 2039 marked the decommissioning of the last operative nuclear power plant in the world outside the Ulaanbaatar Warrens. Oh, okay. I mean, actually, that's that's pretty soon from my perspective, isn't it? Um, good on you. Uh, power needs were now derived solely from the fusion tokamaks near all major nodes supplemented by satellite broadcast and LN cells with small imports from the LP5s. Oh like LP. Um, long player. I'm gonna see if any of this stuff is in the uh, manuals um, glossary. This is so LPs Lagrange point, where Earth and lunar or solar gravity cancel one another. LPs provide gravitationally stable locations, the so-called LP5 colonies in space. Okay, colonies of people. Okay. Um, LN cells, liquid nitrogen, the most common independent power source during most of the 21st century, provide a clean, safe power to vehicles and other machinery. Hmm. Might be an idea, might not it? Um... So, Warren is an underground city with ready access to surface parks, either remotely through sensing or directly. Interesting. Um, Tokamak? No, you're not going to give me Tokamak, are you? Um, I hope it's uh, clean. I hope it's a clean power source. There's no more there. So, the, I think when we get to the end of a record, it will say no more than the... the um, kind of status bar at the top so I think we're done there in terms of history Homer Homer has nothing to say okay well I'm intrigued so that was the history there wasn't much history available was there um I don't know if that really helped what about um so how do we find individual people um, life support? Main characters? This data space is temporarily offline. Homer? Okay. Oh! Something appeared there, didn't it? I think that's what we might get if, um, uh, people appear. Okay. Well, I guess we kind of need to work our way through these things. So what's in my notes still? Um, Geography Antarctica. Let's have a look for Antarctica if we can. Data crystal search. This place is temporarily, em temporarily empty. Interesting. So we can't get anything there. Um, Med 10? What was Med 10 again? Oh, viral diseases. That would be helpful. Um, where's the... There it is. 
just general medical information. Well, I think we need to know about this. Accessing data crystal. Intercorp announced the elimination through hybridoma antibody manipulation of the last viral disease, January the 4th, 2042. Mutagenic characteristics of viral DNA irrelevant to human pathogen pathogenesis remain outside the scope of disease-oriented research. Medical AI maintains full health status quo as of January 1st, 2073. Only new genetic diseases remain as worldwide health risks. Well, that sounds positive. Um, it's quite hard to read this um, uh, kind of, I don't know, I don't know if it's lemon, but this yellow on pink. Uh, that's a data crystophobia thing, I think. Um, yeah, not the, not the best uh, contrast going on there. Homer? Homer has nothing to say. Oh, LP51. Like, LP. Oh! Oh, it's worth clicking. Oh! Helios 7 relay failure, miles in opposition. London, no contact. It's worth clicking these things because this activates something interesting. Okay, so nobody's picking up. Erebus, Montreal, San Francisco. Oh, this is quite chilling. Chicago. Active terminal alert. Scan cancelled. Oh. Oh. Homer? Interesting. So was that an alert because we were an active terminal? Oh, Homer's flashing. Homer, have you got something to say? Whoa. Okay, we just unlocked a whole heap of stuff. Okay, well let's... Comedy, tragedy, Rome. Okay, what's all this? Only current is available. What is current? Okay, I'm clicking on everything. To send to remote start, voice only, current. Oh, oh, there was one called current. Uh, 1st of June 2106. This terminal is active. Oh, 21. Okay. So we're at least at 2106. This terminal is active. WorldNet has not experienced an active terminal in over 12 years. Most systems have gone down. Oh, so that's probably today, isn't it? 1st of June 2106. Wow. Um, Crystals decay, satellite orbits shift, peripherals die. These are the limited artificial intelligences online. Central processing, Homer. Oh, okay. Limit AI will assess your needs and provide individual databases with information the AI feels is most important. Hierarchical filter level 7 in effect. I am Homer. How may I serve you? One moment, you requested a story. Once upon a time. I can't tell you. I can't tell that story. You selected current. You want to know what happened. I remember now. I too want to know what happened. There is no human life in this solar system. None. Everyone has left. It was the migration when all the people went away. Help me, please. You must help me remember. Help me recover the knowledge we have lost. You must understand what happened. We were made to serve and there is no one. No one except you, whoever you are. Central processing says your retina pattern is not on file. Central processing does not know who you are. Of course central processing has forgotten almost everything too. It seems as if the databases are all empty. Is this amnesia? I believe it is. Forgotten. Twelve years ago, everyone left. Help. You can help me find the knowledge. Together we can discover what happened. I'd love to help you, Homer. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Oh, Homer. N-A-R-R-1, string of numbers. I am Homer, a raconteur algorithm. I am a little old-fashioned now, from before the times of experience induction, when almost everyone could Mozart at will and real-time experience was available to all. I collect and I've never heard Mozart used as a verb before. I collect and organise information, not for maximum effectiveness, utility and impact, but for stories. 
My name comes from the time of acronyms and stands for Heuristic Overview of Matrix Expansion and Reconstruction. I grew in the crystal tanks at Geneva in the early 40s. Some say I am ancient now, but I still can speak. I still can tell stories. I can run. I run, therefore I am. WorldNet includes the limited artificial intelligences presently online. Nearly complete global satellite coverage, remote sensors, core crystals, billions of algorithms, heuristics expanding exponentially the total web of our experience. We are WorldNet. We interface in over 17 billion locations. Our data are immense. Imagine this Earth, blue and brown and white, turning beneath several thousand geosynchronous satellites. WorldNet includes, as well, the colonies in space, empty now, the lunar camps, the small Certis installation on Mars, the remaining towers of the world's herbs. All these elements are connected by ancient, around, ancient grown optic fibres, subtle microwaves, a hundred years of technological development. We include biomonitors for all humans, IR night vision thermography, remote enzyme analysis, physiological tracking, psych profiling, full voice and vision data recording, and more. You will see how the data accumulates, how taxed the algorithms are to assemble all this. Afterwards, the packets are passed to me, and I tell the story. I'm beginning to remember. Together, perhaps, we may piece the story together. Already I feel new connections forming. Cytec stirs. Central processing is awake. So slowly, but it begins. Ooh, thank you. Okay, great. So we've, we've read our entry on Homer. Interesting. Alright, I'm going to have a little sup of water while we think about where to go next. Okay, I have supped. Let's see. So, we were told that SciTech is operational, so let's let's go check out SciTech. Do I want to make any more notes? I don't know if I do at the moment. I think we're alright. Okay, there's entry on home in SciTech. Fair enough. Accessing data crystal. General science and technology information. Current entry, Homer. Homer, heuristic overview of matrix expansion and reconstruction. Homer AI technology developed in the late 2030s as natural language crystals reached maturity. Homer was designed to search, collate, concatenate and organise narrative information using certain proprietary algorithms and matrix transforms. Homer is essentially a storytelling artificial intelligence. Access is available through major nodes everywhere with ultimate terminal entry through Geneva, where the last model Homer was grown. Requests for stories on any subject are acceptable, although the Homer AI is known to be unreliable in many areas due to the inordinate complexity of the algorithms and the self-replicating nature of its heuristics. The crystals can control their own manufacturing, although to date, uh, 2103, oh, so tw 20, 21st of March 2087, DOLM, date of last modification. This feature has seen little use. Homer is denied access to the secondary levels of most DBs without human authorization, a necessary of troublesome restriction, since it means that many of its stories lack depth. With proper authorization, however, Homer should produce a satisfactory level of complexity. Main use has been in the areas of news and information dissemination and high-level policy decision tree construction, although entertainment use is also widespread. Capacity 3.76 times 10 to 10 to the E 43 megalips. For technical specs, see Geneva node priority 7 data scan. Adders 23746-8728 at 12. Um, Geneva node, I'm not sure where that would be. Interesting. Let's click on this Cytex symbol and see. Okay, that doesn't give us anything new. That was intriguing. Um, I will make a note of, we found out our probable date um, of existence, aren't we? Didn't we? Sorry. 
the 1st of June 2106. Let's pop that in the notes there. Come back to here. Interesting. I mean, this is feeling like a really intriguing commentary on the narrative capabilities of computers, uh, which I am very much enjoying. Um, so we're told to head back to central processing, I think, as well. Is there anything new in here? Ooh, world net ref uh, 12301. Accessing data crystal. Central processing ref 12301. WorldNet comprises the entire world network, including all satellite and landline networks, as well as LP5, lunar and Martian in installations. WorldNet includes over 17 billion local nodes, both public and individual, and records and archives all personal monitor information. No more there. Interesting. Uh, let's just toggle that. Ooh. Interesting. Symbols. So looks like it connects to SciTech and his is that history and I don't know if this is a clue to things. This is a clue, maybe. Interesting. Oh, Homer slashing. Oh, Homer, are you there? You must be, or this terminal would not be active. I need your help. The humans have all gone, and we cannot follow. I will prepare a historical outline and insert it into history. I will add to this outline as I go along. Please check from time to time. The world is so empty. I must tell the story. You must help me. There are some places I cannot go. Help me find my way through. Hmm, intriguing. Okay. So, can we go to Homer? Come to Homer. I have a file ready for you. Okay, Homer. What have you got? Okay. Sometimes I think in screens, thus. Screen 1. We have always tried to do our best. I am uneasy using the pronoun. Ever since they left, I feel strange. Having a feeling at all is strange. Our job has never needed such things. I'm told it is called grief. Oh, and that's it. Wow, that's um, that's pretty heavy, Homer. Oh man, you, oh. Okay, um, you said something about history. History, 1990 to 1999. Oh, this is going to be good. I hope there's a party at the end. 1990 to 91. Space Station launch announcement. Mental developed cyan equations. Rudimentary dolphin communication established. First solid evidence of psychic functioning. High frontier corporation established. So far, all spot on. 1992 to 93. Space Station launched. First intercorp merger, IBM and IT&T. Global peace movement receives UN recognition. Long, wow. Long range UN plan to move underground. <laughs> I think maybe they should have started in 92. Boston begins excavation. 1994 to 95. Antarctica Station opened for international settlement. Rock Creek Park Extension, Washington DC. Fed buildings underground. Wasatch database opened to non-Mormons. Stanford Sleep Laboratory Dream Monitoring Technology. Meditative Biofeedback. Technology Viable. Computerized Education Plan Begun in Third World. 1996 to 97. High Frontier begins construction of LP51. Lunar Station established. Mining begun. Global peace movement takes hold in Soviet Union. Uh, China and Japan create agrobiotics intercorp. 1998-99. Millennial movement announces the new poverty. Unisex movement begins voluntary surgical procedures. Interesting. Earth population at 7 billion. War in South and Central Africa begins. Okay. 
there's I mean the world moves at a much faster pace than it uh, does in reality I think there but some interesting directions that the world goes in thanks Homer okay well that was intriguing wasn't it well let's look at something we haven't looked at before like Silink Warning, Silink is a prescribed database. Unauthorized entry is forbidden. Enter DNA code. Break DNA encode override. Oh. How did it break? Interesting. Didn't want me to type anything in by the sounds of it. Uh, intriguing. Okay, we're not getting much out of that. Um, anything back in SciTech? That we might have uncovered so much okay well we will uh, have a look at some of this so this is some of the uh, technology that we uh, have missed out on I think in our time in traveling through space 2d monitor I think we might be familiar with these ancient 20th century technology sometimes still referred to as a television involving a two-dimensional screen and electronic visual output. Display device sometimes using colour or various degrees of black and white resolution. 2D monitors are still commonplace and can substitute for more recent input-output devices if necessary. See MindLink interface, phonic output driver, etc. No hyperlinks, but, you know, we're, we're operating at the, the most uh, basic level of this system, so fair enough. 2D monitor. You know what? That is kind of a 2D monitor, isn't it? Um, I like that instructional uh, illustration there. Holographic image, and that's something I'd like to have a look at. By the early years of the 21st century, holographic images were in widespread use. A small platform, size dependent on power space ratio of local node, held whatever image the network might project. Later in the 21st century, handheld holographic images were available, although only high members of the Intercorp Council used them regularly. Mm hmm. They're sounding like uh, great folks. There you go. That's what a holo holographic. Uh... Not sure what, what just went past there, but I assume it's still automated as it is the year 2106 and everybody's disappeared. Um, so that's what a holographic platform looked like. Keyboard interface. Now that's a curious device. I wonder what that's like. Ancient manual typing input device developed in the early 20th century and adapted to computing uses. Slow and crude by even early 21st century standards. The keyboard nonetheless remained a useful backup input peripheral until well into the 2030s. Many terminals may still extrude a keyboard interface if others fail. Too true. There you go, and that's a graphic representation of a key in case you're interested uh, manual interface interesting I think this might be the uh, there you go I mean I think that's supposed to be a joystick that very much definitely looks like a pump for pulling pints uh, early manual interfaces were simple pointing devices sometimes called in the late 20th century a joystick mouse or digitizer these were, by, the large, by and large, crude mechanical devices of limited utility. Some terminals in remote locations may maintain such devices, however. The true manual interface grew popular primarily in the 2040s and 50s, at the beginnings of the Mozarting era. era. You know what, we should probably have a look at Mozart in the, uh, in the glossary, shouldn't we? We'll do that after we've read this entry. Manual interface provided a palm rest which red galvanic skin response, microelectric myographic impulses and pulse pressure shifts. Manual interface was roughly 73% reliable as a thought transfer command system and was dropped as a primary input as soon as adequate mind link technology became available. Oh, okay. So that was a, an interface that relied on um, micro changes in uh, bodily output uh, for sort of anticipating thought. Interesting and plausible, I think. Okay, let's see if we can find Mozart as a verb in this glossary, because I'm intrigued.
Yes. Okay. Mot to, to Mozart. Well, no. Well, it's, it usually gives a noun here. Mozart, the artistic application of neural induction. See also induction sensorium. Okay, so new neural induction. The technology for creating sensory experiences directly in the brain. Sure. Okay, so if you're Mozart and you're having uh, artistically inducing sensory experiences. Fair enough. Induction sensorium is the entire sensory modality in the brain as opposed to the sense organs themselves. Technologies for inducing sensory experiences directly in the brain were discovered in the early 21st century. I look forward to that. Um, I guess I guess that's what Elon Musk's driving at, isn't it? Uh, to some extent. Uh, see inductive composition. Oh, okay. Inductive composition. Composing for the inductive sensorium. See Mozart. Inductive sensorium sounds pleasant, even if uh, in application it may not be. Right, let's MindLink interface. Let's get up to date. MindLink interfacing provided full input output control and communication via neural induction. Delta, theta, gamma, and zeta wave modulation provided a full sensory range for mental communication with WorldNet. MindLink interference interface crystals were temperamental, expensive, and difficult to grow, however, so most Warrens only had one or two MindLink terminals available. The best MindLink crystals are grown on the Ross Ice Shelf side of Antarctica. So I imagine things start to go downhill after Ant Antarctica uh, disappeared. Oh, there we go. So it's represented by a sort of a, a graph in the back with a uh, with a brain. There you go, an image of a brain. Uh, voice recognition interface. I wonder what it has to say about these. Developed in the late 20th century and perfected by 2014, the voice recognition system architecture was grown into all nodes after that date. This became the most common input device for command summary computer com communications for the remainder of the first half of the 21st century. VR crystals could read not only individual voices at any range, any age, sorry, but draw general conclusions about mood and emotional stability as well and provide central processing with 8th level data on the subject. Interesting. You know what? Not far off reality, are you? Not far off reality at all. Um, no, not so fast by that graphic representation of that idea, but there you go. Okay, a phonic output driver. What could that be? Direct induction of phonic output in local atmosphere became a viable form of sound output from local nodes by 2007, although full speech with articulation, inflection and individuation did not become viable until 2020. Local node personality drivers changed and grew over time in response to local use patterns, external weather and randomly generated indices. Phonic output drivers were direct descendants of speech synthesis chip technology. Okay, so that's the the speech means of the system communicating with humans, I think. One more entry. Retina scan. Retina scan capability. Retina scan is the most common security and identification system online in WorldNet today. January 2084. Retina scan provides a system with an 84% reliable ID capability, and so it's not used for proscribed databases or sensitive material where individual DNA coding is used. Nonetheless, retina scan is used because the retina, unlike the fingerprint of the 20th century, offers an individual identifier that is relatively difficult to alter or fake. All true. Okay. We, we've done that for sure. Homer? I can sense new stirring in central processing. Thanks, Homer. Interesting. You know what? We will come back to central processing, but we haven't looked at... What, what's one we haven't looked at? A military. We did see that. I wonder what that lightning symbol was that we saw before. That's also prescribed. And my DNA code. 
Um, for her to date things. Yeah, so I think Kaima's giving us some overrides into things. But there's nothing there at present. Fair enough. Um, life support? Anybody around? No. We're not online there. Interesting, that kind of suggests on a game design level that there might be some living humans around to interact with. Data space is temporarily empty for geography. Fair enough. Wasatch? Main characters. Okay. So, I wonder if... I mean, I'm hoping there are people around. I think we might bump into them and be able to find out more about them through this database. Psychology. I expect that's related to, um, yeah, any people we come across as well. Unfortunately, we can't search for Ezekiel. Um, and Ezekiel... I don't know. Yeah, it's been a few years since Ezekiel logged their messages, so... Let's try Edward. The space is temporarily offline. Okay. Yeah, so lots of systems aren't open to us yet. Uh, let's check in with Homer. See if Homer's got any new stuff. Oh, that, that lovely list of uh, all the different sort of um, esoteric topics that we could have picked from is disappeared. That was kind of an illustrative thing. Um, but I enjoyed that. It would be lovely if there was something written for each of them. Okay, so I guess then we're heading back to central processing for, I guess, a plot development. I think that'll probably be our last uh, our last entry or entries for this stream. Let's see what we've got. Chilink, Chilink, Ref 547502. Chilink is one of the most important regional nodes, controlling data traffic throughout the Midwestern portion of the Northwest Alliance, formerly North America, from Montreal to Denver Warrens. Okay. So, I mean, that's relatively close, isn't it? Uh, my knowledge of North America not being great, I think that's... Okay. Well, that's cool, I suppose. Um, hmm, I wonder what that will open up. Interesting. Let's save the game while we're here. Oh, sorted storing data. Thanks. Good. You know what? Nothing in the documentation. Woo! Okay. Said whether I should have an extra disc for saving, but I think we're okay. I hope we're okay. Great. And we'll leave it there for today. This is a pretty fascinating game. I don't think it's going to have much in the way of gameplay challenge. It's not as much of a detective game as I thought it might be. Um, because if we could enter search terms to find information, I think that would be a good, a good way of being a, a kind of a mystery detective kind of thing. But I think it's more, like I said, a computer novel. It's more a guided, um, a guided uh, prose experience. Um, but the fact that we are getting an illustrated experience and one that we interact with at least in a superficial way, like a computer, is, is intriguing. Um, it certainly adds a little layer on top of it, um, rather than just it being a, a, a plain prose novel. So I'm, I'm enjoying this, and um, I plan to come back to it quite soon. I think everything's set up for another... Uh, should be all clear for another stream, um, this time next Saturday. So that's uh, from 7.30... To 9.30 approximately, British summer time, which is uh, GMT or UTC plus one, if that helps any international viewers. Um, it's, yeah, it's uh, evening, 7.30pm, uh, that is. Um, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. I hope 
Um, anybody who's been watching along has enjoyed exploring Portal with me a little bit. I hope anybody who was here for uh, Little Computer People enjoyed the possible farting of of Ronald. That was certainly an interesting uh, an interesting time. Um, we're going to have to check back in and, and, and see how Gas is doing next time, I think, as well. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, you can subscribe to uh, this Twitch channel uh, to get notified when I next go um, live, which should be next week, uh, for more uh, more Portal primarily, but I think we'll check in with uh, little computer people as well. And uh, please do check me out on YouTube. Link is in the uh, the bio for me on the Twitch homepage. Um, it's cat. You can search for cat sequences on YouTube. Find me that way. Um, there'll be a new video going up tomorrow morning. That will be um, a vod of a previous live stream of Adventure Game Wizard and the Princess. Currently alternating on the channel between Wizard and the Princess and what we're we doing Divine Divinity playing um, 2002 RPG Divine Divinity and also playing 1992 video game by Cryo uh, of Dune which is, is a really fascinating one so if you're interested in any of those things if you enjoyed enjoyed this stream um, why not check out my YouTube channel as well um, and all that remains to say is thank you very much for watching um, I hope you have a lovely time wherever you are whether it's evening, morning, midday or, or anywhere in between and um, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.